The first quarter of 2020 has been a little bit of a dumpster fire, okay? Every month there's been something major that's happened and has just left you like thinking to yourself, well, gosh darn it, bud, that's no good, you know? But the good news is I got my wife's cat lover coffee cup with me and that's pretty good. I remember when we thought 2016 was a tough year, which was pretty much just like a free to play version of 2020, hot dog, it's pretty terrible, by the way. Thank you for the coffee, loyal coffee, I love you. And while the rest of the world is learning things that were taught in kindergarten, like washing your hands and not touching your face, we're just over here waiting for people to let us do cool vroom vroom things, okay? And I wanna go vroom vroom with all of my friends. I'm Alex, Alex at Fi on Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about the large french fry order when you're not sure if you're hungry car, the Dr. Pepper of the modification community, the car that has been able to do pretty much anything we've ever wanted besides go super, super fast and has left us a few bucks in the wallet to get us Red Robin every once in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the one, the only, the Volkswagen Jetta. And if you're just jumping into this video, Hiya. don't forget to subscribe. And if you, it, it, like, it, it's a super low commitment. We promise it helps us to keep making bangers. And we promise not to make you sad with an upload. And if you're looking for aftermarket ruedas, that's actually wheels in Spanish, learn that one off Google Translate, tires or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we literally have everything you could possibly imagine. Now, if you are still stuck at home and you still haven't started working on your build, I'm gonna need you to go do that right now. But if you do not finish your car during a time where you are forced to be home, I have some bad news for you, bud. You ain't gonna finish it, okay? The Volkswagen Jetta was geborgened, that's birthed in German in 1979 and actually wasn't much more than a Volkswagen Golf with a, with a, with a trunk. Its goal was to essentially grow the Volkswagen options in the marketplace while still providing consumers with something that the Golf didn't have a trunk. The Jetta, named after the good old Atlantic jet stream, wasn't really an innovation. It didn't have any sort of groundbreaking design. In fact, it was actually pretty simple. It was like cheating off your best friend's homework. You see, in the 70s, while people didn't mind the Golf, some folks didn't line, like, they didn't like the hatchback, non-saloon style, weird, bullying, bubbling looking thing. You know, they're like, those guys took our jobs. You know, like that, <clears throat> oh God, horse. So Volkswagen being Volkswagen literally just looked at the successful Golf and said, well, like, what if we, what if we, I mean, what if we just added a trunk? The crowd got wild, okay? The Jetta became an instant success and one of the best selling European cars in the United States, Canada, and Mexico, baby. Absolutely wild. You got to imagine that the Volkswagen engineers were just like, all day, baby. All day. We threw a trunk on it. Bing, bang, boom. We're done. Give me a raise. The Jetta would go through its first two generations, not really changing too much. It just added more space, a little bit more technology, and of course, more squares since it was the mid 80s and the United States just had a thing for squares. But North American market really loved it. I mean, there was nothing really wrong with it. The designing actually came from somebody named G Giorgietto Guigario. G Giorgietto Gui Georgie, Georgie. Okay, the dude did pretty good. These cars were starting to be built fairly well too, which was something that did plague Volkswagen back in the day. They started introducing more robotics and auto manufacturing systems to pretty much prevent them from screwing up. And it really started to play a heavy role in Volkswagen's manufacturing process. As the third generation entered the world, this is where quite a few people like you and people like me start to really remember the Volkswagen Jetta. The car was Volkswagen's saving grace in the 90s because otherwise Volkswagen wasn't going to have a good enough plant to even produce a damn car for the North American market. The third generation, despite the legendary mission it was on in the third generation for Volkswagen, ended up pulling out and pulling through with making the Mark III Jetta successful in NA, unlike TSM, they gotta get it together. But the Mark III had some interesting things that enthusiasts and commuters wanted. It just had good stuff. It had a 2.8 liter VR6 motor for the Vroom Vroom community and a 1.9 liter turbo diesel for the 
Holy shit, you get what for gas mileage? Community. I mean, it worked really well. The VR6 was the same engine that powered the Corrado hatch at the time, and this trim was especially something because it allowed people to jump into a semi-performance vehicle without necessarily having to dish out cash for a BMW or an Audi, which was pretty much the only direction you could go. On top of that, throw an exhaust on a VR6 and it sounds like a damn 911. It is an insanely good noise, and if you've never heard a VR6 with an aftermarket exhaust, you're missing out on life, okay? But it still had the reliability and maintenance cost of a Volkswagen, which made it just fantastic. Stop judging my couch. The fourth generation would likely get the second most amount of love by enthusiasts. Coming in the two point slow version, a 1.8 turbo version, which desperately needs a blow off valve the moment you buy it, and the iconic VR6 model, the VW Jetta continued to just produce. Just produce and produce and produce like a rabbit, all right? But automotive enthusiasts really started to jump into these things because turbos meant tunes. Oh my gosh. Small cars meant fun driving experiences and more affordable meant easier to jump into and rip her up and down the street at a younger age. And because it had more space, more doors and a trunk, all of a sudden that that meant the parents were like, you wanna know what son or daughter? That's a good purchase, don't worry about it. As the fifth and sixth generation came in and out of the world, one thing continued to be the same for the Volkswagen Jetta. It was the fact that they wanted everyone to own one of these. It was the Volkswagen version of a Corolla, a Camry, even like its own Beetle. And it worked because the cars were easy to get a hold of. They were absolutely everywhere. They were low maintenance. All the good stuff that you'd want out of a car if you were just a normal Joe or Jane looking for something to drive. And people like you and people like me would pick them up around, you know, play around with them a little, turn them into dailies, and then throw some BBSs on them, a blow off valve, and of course, an exhaust. Now, the sixth generation got big and got even bigger and more for the everyday person. And now eight-ish years of this generation have been out and then they came with the same 19 million trims that Volkswagen usually always falls for. And that is, that's Volkswagen, baby. All the trims, everything you could want, they got it. But we're not here to talk about the history of the Volkswagen Jetta. If you want that, you can just go pick up the books that the Advanced Auto starts, like aisle seven, where it has all the repair information. You end up using it once, and then you never touch it again, but you pack it six or seven times because you never know when you're gonna use it again. I just went through that. No, we're here to talk about you wanting to own one of these bad boys. So you want a Volkswagen Jetta. Well, set down your forge bluff valve and grab your favorite OBD2 scanner. We're gonna talk about what it's like to actually own one of these CEL happy boys, okay? The Volkswagen Jetta is a car that pretty much anyone could own and modify. They look good, they have space, and they've been around for like 27 decades. If you're looking to modify a car for the first time, First time, Virgin Modifier, all right? A Jetta is a good pickup. Now, the earlier generations are super cheap, especially the third generation, and you can usually find one for a pretty decent price, only like a couple, two, three thousand dollars. Now, these cars generally end up being someone's first car or first modified car right out of the gate. For the older folk, the 2010 to 2019 or most recent generation was fantastically well received by the community. Now, of course, just like all VWs, there's always a few quirks that you may want to be aware of before scooping one up. The first generations are pretty much just golfs in my opinion, so just get the golf if you want an old school VW, because those things slap. The second generations are cool. They have the period correctness potential and aren't too shabby to drive around, but for the price of a newer one, you could usually end up buying one of those because you want to, not because the budget won't allow you to get a newer one. You'll want to be careful with the rust though, because once it catches on to these older generations, it's worse than a clingy high school fling. And I'm telling you that because I love you. Okay, trust me on this one. Volkswagens, especially the Jettas, the older generations, once rust grabs on, she just don't let go, champ. The VR6 models are always worth it if you can snag one without rust, as they combine a good chunk of what makes these cars so awesome with an interesting motor. Did I actually spill f and they're also fun to listen to. They have a whole bunch of fun, weird, quirky things about the VR6 that just makes it fun to drive and love. And if you've ever actually driven one, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But one of the things that you will need with Volkswagen Jettas is patience. Jettas are cars people can modify and they can handle it, but they can get a little bit 
finicky, so you want to make sure that if you're buying one, it just doesn't have electrical tape over the check engine light. Most Jettos will either run a BC coilover setup or if it's an older build, ST or KW. Now, air suspension is extremely popular on the 6th gen because they lay frame quite well. Now, in terms of wheels and tires, almost everything is narrow on these cars. Well, because that's just how Volkswagen do, okay? Now, the reason is, is simply because these this car's goal was to have good gas mileage and lots of space. So they didn't really waste any space in empty wheel wells. So you're gonna see most people run eight and a half wides on 215s or 225s. And that's an extremely common setup for most recent generations. Now, you can get a little bit bigger in the older generations, but people usually don't. You're gonna end up usually running like BBSs. These cars have been around for so long that they almost always have a problem with one generation or another. Like there's so many generations out there that's impossible for you to not have some sort of issue per generation. Now, when you're going out there and you're looking at which one you want, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing specific research, not just on the generation that you're looking for, but the trim as well. Now, Volkswagens do a fantastic job at staying alive, especially the diesel ones, but the VR6s can be a bit finicky. And I know that this check engine light, although an iconic joke, is extremely common and why they kind of carry a bad rep every once in a while. So if you're looking to pick one up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the maintenance done right. And if you are buying it, just remember who you're buying it from because a lot of these cars usually sit in the hands of 16 to 19 year olds because they are their first car. Now you just gotta be okay with that. But hey, they get good gas mileage, they look pretty decent, they aren't too expensive and they ain't too quick. But they love making you cry because of the O2 sensors and the wagons got booty for days. So in terms of what you get, you can get pretty much anything you want out of a Jetta, depending on the trim, generation, and like thing that you want to do to it. So what do you think about the Volkswagen Jetta? Drop your comment below and of course, let us know what you'd like us to talk about next. To those still asking for tips on girlfriends, I'd highly recommend showing them your recon helmet in Halo 3. It worked for me. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We hope you enjoyed. We will see you later. Peace.